So, if you've been paying attention to my uploads for the past couple of weeks, you know I've been watching some Gundam. I started with Seed, and then Destiny, to follow on from there. And recently, well, about a week ago, as of recording this, I finished I Am Blooded Orphans. And we're gonna talk about it. But, before we get into it, um, if you'd like to, you know, me keep making videos like this, talking about Gundam and stuff like that, uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, sub, notification bell, you know, YouTube stuff, make number go up. Be really cool. Uh, it also lets me know that you know people enjoy this, and given the how the other videos I've done, I take it people do. So yeah, um, I'm loaded orphans. Just off the bat, it's really damn good. Like it's so good. It was a really really good watch. Very early on, um, we'll start at the beginning. I didn't actually think it was. I mean, it wasn't bad early on, but I, to start with, I was like, eh, it's all right, you know. But I think I prefer seed. But having finished it, I think I'm more partial to Iron Blooded Orphans overall by the ending. Um, well, not the ending, but by the end of watching it all, um, I'd say I'm more partial to Iron Blooded Orphans. Not to say that Seed's bad, because if you watch my video, you know it isn't. But um, yeah, Iron Blooded Orphans, really, really good. Had a really good time watching it. The season one finale is where I was... Yeah, the like, last couple episodes of season one were just incredible, man. Those were really what sold me on Iron Blooded Orphans. Obviously, everything that led up to that is very important and crucial to that incredible climax of season one, or part one, whatever. Um, the genuinely fantastic, incredible stuff. Loved it. Um, like, it was incredible. Uh, and season two is just as good, if not better, the whole way through. The political tension and conflict in Iron Blood Orphans is actually really, really interesting. I found myself genuinely invested in it to some degree. Um, Cudelia is a fantastic character. I love her. She's, she's adorable. Deserves head pats. Uh, so does Atra, of course. But we're not here to talk about the waifus. We're here to talk about big fucking robots beating the shit out of each other in space because politics. That's what we're here to talk about. Um, and yeah, first of all, the Barbatos. I didn't like its design initially. And then... By, again, by the end, it's kind of reflective of the show. At the beginning, I was like, eh, it's okay. And then by the end, I'm like, ah, oh, yo, this is fucking sick. Um, Barbatus Lupus Rex is so sick looking. Like, it's such a cool design. It's so goddamn cool. Um, yeah, really, really sick. So, yeah, the plot. Well, I mean, I kind of already given my thoughts on the plot. It's really good. I really like the politics of it. I also really like, um... It, to be fair, actually, it did subvert my expectations a little bit. Initially, when I first started watching it, I was imagining that, okay, so we got this Mi mainly with Mikazuki. You know, he's very, um, how do I put it? Uh, I don't really know the best way to put it, so I'm just gonna, you know, you, if you've seen the show, you know what Mikazuki's like. I imagined that, you know, given how he is with Orga, what would happen is he'd be like that for most of the show, and then maybe at some point there'd be a turning point where, I don't know, Orga goes psycho or something, or something happens, and then Mikazuki starts to change and develop and become more independent and think for himself. That's Yeah, there we are. That's probably the way to put it. And that didn't happen at all. And that's entirely fair, and I don't see that as a problem. Yeah, Mikazuki starts to become a bit more of a character. If anything, Mikazuki probably is, in terms of development-wise, the weakest of the bunch, because he stays relatively the same the entire way through. He doesn't really have much of a character arc. But if anything, I feel like that's almost certainly on purpose. He's not meant to have one. He's meant to be someone that's resolute in his beliefs and his actions from the very beginning. He believes in Augur, and there's no reason for him to change that belief at any point. So he, as a character, stays basically the same the entire way through. So, you know. It's, um, interestingly reflective of what I believe Mikazuki's character was supposed to be, and that he doesn't have much development. Um, speaking of Augur... He goes through quite a bit of development. He starts, he's mostly the same, you know. He ends up going full circle, really, you know. Starting out, it's all about family, then trying to get everything that he possibly can for his family, and then back to basically it's just being for his family, specifically not trying to have the world as well. Um, it's really quite impressive. Basically, Iron Blood Orphan's main theme, you know, is family. The, you have this ragtag group of individuals for this company. They've all been treated like shit. All searching for their place to be. But the thing is, the place that they were supposed to be, or the place for them, the place they were looking for, was there the whole time. Tekadang is their place to be. It is where 
you know, the place they were looking for. You know, it's quite nice that by the end, you kind of have, they kind of have that realization. It's quite nice, quite wholesome, quite sweet. Um, yeah. Um, although one thing I will say about IBO, I do think character-wise, it's less interesting than um, Seed. Gundam Seed, I spoke about the characters quite a lot because I really like the characters in Gundam Seed. I think they're what carry the show. Whereas in Iron Blooded Orphans, the characters are obviously very important. But I think the plot around the characters is more what carries the show, less the characters themselves. Although there are some very good characters, don't get me wrong. But Gillis is fantastic. I love him. He's a great guy. Really interesting um, perspective on the world and how he goes about trying to achieve his goals, what he's willing to throw away and sacrifice. And his um, friendship with um, Baldwin is in, is really good. I really enjoyed um, his dynamic in within the plot and the role he played. Very interesting. Also, I love the fact that throughout this one we get like lore about the past, um, technically, of the world. Also, one weird thing um, that I just found while watching IBO is that in Seed, where they have fucking flip phones, right? They have lasers that can, like, laser weapons, okay? And then you go to IBO, where they've got, like, pretty convenient, simple, and readily accessible space travel with space pots and, you know, all of this ridiculous shit. And yet, they're using bullets and rockets and, like, big blunt weapons instead of, you know, the lasers and shit that we're used to seeing from Seed. And kind of weird that, like, the technology has progressed in 300 years, bear in mind. We have this, um, benchmark number of a 300-year, you know, sort of time frame. Not from Seed, obviously. I know they're not related, but you know what I'm saying. From when something like Barbatos was built and used to present day of Iron Blood Orphans. It's been 300 years. And basically, technology's not really developed a huge amount since then. Um, yeah, and obviously, well, I guess you could say the Ayalashki system technically develops quite a bit with, you know, Ayn and um, Baldwin, you know, their implementation of it into themselves, or themselves into it, in the case of Ayn. The Ayalashki is very interesting. I'm calling it that because that's what it's called in the Japanese, that's the Alaya system. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the full name of it is off the top of my head. But yeah, the Ayalashki... Uh, it's a cool system, and it's very OP in-universe. Being able to pilot the suit as if it's a part of your body, effectively. Uh, very, very strong compared to piloting a suit, you know, manually. So, yeah. Kind of interesting. Um, yeah. I just really, really like Dying Blooded Orphans. I don't really have as much to say on it as I did with Seed. Because, for me, you know, I just feel like, experience it yourself. I don't want to spoil the story too much. And um, the ending is incredible like, overall, of both seasons. The overall ending for the end of Season 2 and the Season 1's ending is absolutely fantastic. But yeah, genuinely go check Iron Blood Orphans out. It's a genuinely really, really good show. It's fantastic watch. Um, yeah. That's all I've really got to say. Go check it out. Because it's mainly main plot-oriented, I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to spoil it. So yeah. Go watch it. And the characters are also good, but less good than Seed's characters, in my opinion. In terms of, like, relevance to the plot and stuff to talk about for a video. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I've been Animosi, you've been you, and I hope you join next time for another video. A ta-ta. For now.